On May 28, 2023, China's self-developed C919 large passenger aircraft completed its first commercial passenger flight. The story behind this achievement is nuanced and complex, and this video explores whether China, faced with a series of technological challenges and difficulties, can catch up with the pace of development in the international aviation industry. Technology is key. According to the former Deputy Director of the Chinese Aerospace Science and Technology Innovation Center and an expert in the aerospace field, None of the crucial components for the C919, such as the engine, radar, communication, navigation, flight control materials, and key aircraft parts like bearings and brakes, are something China can manufacture. And this is not just for the near future, but potentially for the next 10, 20, 30, or even 50 years. Next comes the political factors. 60% of C919's main suppliers are from the United States and 30% from Europe. If a conflict were to occur between China and the West, the supply of aviation parts could be immediately cut off. This would mean that new aircraft production would stop. There will be no parts available for maintenance of existing aircraft and flight could be interrupted at any time, potentially grounding the C919 fleet immediately. Furthermore, China has invested 700 billion yuan in the C919 project, but if the aircraft fails to succeed in the market, this investment could be lost. Currently, China's aviation market is firmly held by Airbus and Boeing, so if the C919 wants to make inroads, it must ensure a supply of aircraft parts from the US. In the international market, the C919 also needs to pass stringent international certification to be widely recognised, and establishing a comprehensive after-sales service and maintenance system is also a daunting task for the Chinese aviation industry. Despite these problems, was China aware of these challenges when they decided to embark on the C919 project? The answer is yes. However, their goal is to cooperate with Western companies to develop China's large aircraft and to borrow advanced Western technologies. Once the technologies are in hand, they can nationalize these large aircraft and use state subsidies to push out Western companies from the international and domestic markets. But this approach has been criticized as forced technology transfer, violating the rules of the World Trade Organization. This is not fair competition. In the third year after the large aircraft project was approved in 2009, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, COMAC, chose CFM International, a joint venture between American GE and French Safran, to produce engines for the C919. The engines planned to be supplied were the Leap 1C variant of the Leap X, using Safran's carbon fibre composites and GE's ceramic matrix composites. According to the contract, CFM shared design blueprints but not manufacturing details, yet China sought to obtain details of material manufacturing processes. According to disclosures from cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, in 2010, Turbine Panda targeted Los Angeles company Capstone Turbine in technology theft. Over the next four years, China launched cyber attacks against foreign suppliers like General Electric, Honeywell and French Saffron in an attempt to steal the design technology of the C919 aircraft's new turbofan engine and other key components. This act of theft had a significant impact on the development of the CJ1000AX turbofan engine, a large passenger aircraft engine developed independently by the Chinese Communist Party reportedly shortening its development cycle by several years and saving billions of dollars in expenses. However, this engine has always been controversial, seen as a copy of the Leap 1C. The sizes of the engines and their turbofan blades are strikingly similar and they have been in production since 2016. While Western suppliers were willing to partner with COMAC and establish joint ventures for in-country assembly of components, China's attempts to acquire Western technologies through cyber attacks have intensified Western concerns and caution. 
CFM International, for instance, had to pull back on the technology it was providing, resulting in the C919 engine's performance and material utilization falling short of initial expectations. The C-series engine fitted on the C919 utilized older materials. Traditional high-temperature alloys replaced carbon fiber composites, and previous generation titanium aluminium blades and conventional high-temperature alloy materials replaced ceramic matrix composite turbines. Because the engines uses these traditional materials and to ensure its metrics aren't vastly inferior to those of the Boeing 737's B-series engine, the C-series engine has been extended by 1.5 metres and significantly increased in diameter, weighing in at 3,935 kilograms, nearly 1.2 tonnes heavier than its B-series counterpart. Yet its thrust remains the smallest of the ABC series, at just over 12 or 13 tonnes. It consumes significantly more fuel and has a range of only 4,000 to 5,500 kilometres, a notable shortfall compared to the Boeing's 6,000 to 7,000 kilometres. There's speculation that China may utilise its domestically produced CJ-1000A aero engine in the future. However, the technical challenges of developing an aero engine are extraordinarily complex. Even if China successfully produces the CJ-1000A, it will likely only match the Leap 1C engine's capabilities and will fall short in comparison to the B-series engine. This is because the durability and fatigue resistance of the composite fan blades used in a B-series engine, developed by GE, surpass any metal and cannot be created overnight. It involves 10 to 15 years, substantial investment and a meticulous process from design to material selection, from testing to certification. Each step demands time and money. Designing composite fan blades requires starting with small-scale testing to assess basic material properties such as strength, crack resistance and fatigue cycles. Then comes the subcomponent level testing. Looking at how to drill holes in a material or attach metals and protect against sunlight and UV damage. Subsequently, component level testing commences, manufacturing blades and conducting various shake, vibration throw and even bird strike simulations. Each stage demands considerable testing and evaluation, all of which are expensive. For example, fan blade detachment testing alone can cost up to 50 million per blade not to mention the inevitable destruction of engines during tests. Therefore, the development of GE's fan composites is the accumulation of generations of knowledge and experience, and it cannot be simply bought with money. Nor is it that Chinese entities can fully understand everything just by stealing this data and successfully develop products as efficient as those of General Electric. Even for artificial intelligence, fully understanding and mastering all the knowledge from GE Aviation isn't necessarily achievable, not only due to the complexity of the technologies involved, but also because of the amount of practical experience and accumulated expertise required. This brings out China's position in the global aviation industry. In the C919 project, China's primary role is in assembly, but it falls short in fundamental research and development. This situation is common in other high-tech Chinese companies such as Huawei, which excels in technical application but lack genuine fundamental innovation. In fact, China still heavily relies on imports in many key areas. For example, some crucial components of high-end security doors need to be imported from Germany. If even for manufacturing something as basic as security doors, China needs to depend on imports, then in more complex, technology-intensive sectors like the aviation industry, China's dependency on foreign technologies and resources becomes even more evident. Insiders have been outspoken about this. The realm of fundamental technologies, from industrial to scientific, still appears to be a domain where China lags behind whether it be the core design software underpinning these technologies or the process of manufacturing itself. China often leans on foreign software and methods. High-end machinery, such as advanced machine tools and robotics, are typically imported, with domestic alternatives being far and few between. 
Even in the basic sectors of industry, China struggles to independently produce materials capable of withstanding extreme conditions. Whether it be high temperatures, low temperatures, high pressure, corrosive acid alkali environments, or even abrasive wear, the Chinese industry has yet to master the production of such materials. China's aviation dreams face more than mere technical challenges. They are deeply entangled in a thorny labyrinth of international politics and economic complexities. China's ambitious aspiration to make the C919 competitive with Airbus and Boeing in the domestic market and to seize a quarter of the global narrow-body jet market seems increasingly elusive in the face of stark realities. Firstly, the C919 is simply not competitive with Boeing and Airbus offerings in terms of fuel efficiency or maintenance assurances. Spending $100 million on a C919 compared to $110 million on an A320neo does not provide a compelling value proposition, particularly when the former entails higher operating costs. Secondly, the aviation industry's international standards set a stringent safety and certification bar for new aircraft. For the C919 to be sold globally, it must receive certification from the US Federal Aviation Administration or the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, which presents a formidable challenge. In a domestic market, the C919 cannot compete head-on with Western aircraft. However, China may implement large-scale subsidies to promote the C919, aiming to displace Boeing or Airbus share in the home market. This strategy may seem effective but carries risks. Should geopolitical conflicts with the West arise, they could immediately cease supplying parts from the C919, bringing production to a grinding halt. Despite a potential strategy of large-scale subsidies, the C919's prospects on the global market are not promising. While it has secured orders worth $94 billion for 1,035 units, all of these come from domestic companies, which undoubtedly hampers its international outreach. Finally, COMAX production capacity is under scrutiny. The company has stated its intention to achieve an annual production volume of 150 units by 2029, with the goal of capturing one-third of the Chinese large aircraft market by 2035. However, this ambitious plan is overshadowed by the firm's current challenges and the industry's scepticism about its abilities. However, according to COMAX 2017-2036 Civil Aircraft Market Forecast Annual Report, by 2035, the demand for single-aisle jetliners in China will reach 5,539 units. To capture a third of this market, 1,846 units will be needed making this goal seemingly impossible to reach. Even if the company maintains its projected annual production rate of 150 units from 2029 to 2035, this would only amount to 900 units. To produce another 900 units in the six years before 2029 seems virtually unachievable. Dave Calhoun, the CEO of Boeing, emphasised in early June this year that COMAC must increase its C919 output to make any significant inroads in the Chinese market. While this may be the case, the likelihood of geopolitical conflict between China and Western countries is increasing, which makes the mass production of the C919 problematic. This leads to the question of whether Western countries should continue supplying the parts needed for the C919 project. In the short term, these transactions may not cause direct harm. However, in the long term, they could potentially nurture a powerful competitor. That said, the timing might not be right for the West to take action as larger geopolitical power plays await. Russia's military actions in Ukraine are currently at a standstill and China may potentially step in as a military aid provider. Although Xi Jinping has not yet indicated a willingness to provide assistance, if China begins supplying military equipment to Russia, the West could have more justification to cut off the C919 supply chain. In the field of aviation technology, China's catch-up game will not be achieved overnight.
The seven to eight decades of technical accumulation and experience in the engine manufacturing sector in Western countries cannot be replicated in a short time. For China to reach the same level of technical prowess, it might require a long time and massive investments, and the desired outcome may still be elusive. Some experts believe that for China to keep pace with the advancements in aviation technology, it may need to seek new cooperative relationships in a more open environment, perhaps even after the fall of the CCP. Regardless. The toppling of the communist regime is fraught with uncertainties and challenges, but it may well be the only path for China.